Alright guys, so welcome to another video. Uh, in this video we're going to look at proof and reasoning uh, again for the Algebra Basics uh, video. So in this, uh, this first question it says show that n plus 3 squared minus n minus 3 squared is an even number for all positive integer values of n. Okay, now it's not enough just to, I've seen a lot of students do the following. What they'll do, they'll, they'll, um, they'll test values for it. They'll say, oh, well, let's look at n equals 1. And then they'll put n equals 1 into here, and they'll put n equals 1 into here. And then they'll, they'll, see that, and they'll see that an even number comes out. And then they'll try n equals 2, and they'll see an, and they'll, and they'll see an even number comes out again. Or, and, then, and then they'll say, oh, that's it. But it's not enough to do that. It's not enough to only test specific values because what about n equals 3 and n equals 4 and n equals 5 and so on and so on and so on. Um, how much closer have you got to proving that that result there is true for all positive integer values of n? And that's, uh, and that's what I want to talk about in this video. Instead of testing, what you want to do is you want to take an approach where you can change what this expression looks like to make it blatantly obvious that yes, it is true for all positive values of n. And that's where the reasoning comes in. So proof and reasoning, uh, is that, they actually go hand in hand. It's actually one of the same thing. So how do we do this? What do we do about this expression? What do we need to do next? Well, what we can see is n plus 3 squared is actually the same as n plus 3 times n plus 3. So so that, that's a huge clue there with what we may have to do next with what we've done in previous sections. And then looking at the second term, we can also see that we've got n minus 3 times another n minus 3. So what we need to do first is to multiply out the brackets. So let's do just that. You know, with everything that we've gone over in previous videos, we can see firstly we've got n times n, which is n squared. We've got 3 times n, which is 3n. And then we've got another 3n. And then finally, we've got 3 times 3, which is 9. Now, we have to be careful now because we've got a negative sign here. So what I'm going, so what, this is what I'm going to do. I'm not, going, I'm not going to worry about the negative sign at the moment. Right? I'm going to go over here. And I'm just going to work out what n minus 3 time, times n minus 3 is. So let's do just that. We've got n times n, which is n squared. We've got n times minus 3, which is minus 3n. We've got another minus 3 and another n over here. So that's another minus 3n. And then finally, we've got minus 3 times minus 3, which is plus 9. So if we simplify this, we've got n squared minus 3n minus another 3n is minus 6n and then plus 9. Now, this negative sign here, that means that we are subtracting this whole thing, okay? That's minus all of this, this whole thing. So this whole thing is this whole thing here. So what that means, that means that we need to subtract this whole thing, it's not enough just to subtract the first term, we have to subtract everything. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to introduce square brackets here, and then that's minus n squared, minus 6n, plus 9. So we have to, we have to subtract everything that we've just worked out in this quadratic. It's not enough just to, take the, just to subtract the first term and think, right, everything else stays the same. Because that's another common mistake which I see uh, students make. So that means if we tidy this up, we've got n squared. Plus 3n plus 3n is plus 6n plus 9. Now, ma now minus everything inside the brackets, the first term we can see we've got minus and then n squared. So we can put minus n squared here. This is where it starts to get complicated. We've got minus over here. We've got minus m minus 6n. So minus minus 6n will become a plus 6n. And then we've got minus and then plus 9, which is minus 9. Now, if we tidy this up now, we can actually see that we've got a plus n squared over here, 
which cancels out with minus n squared over here. We've also got a plus 9 here, which cancels out of minus 9 over here. So that leaves us with these two terms here. We've got plus xn here, and, and then another plus xn over here. So altogether, we've just got 12n. So we've just shown now that this whole thing here is equal to 12n. Now, how does that help us to show that an even number that, that this is always going to be even for all positive integer values of n. How does that help us? Well, we can we can clearly see, can't we? We know that 12 is an even number. That's common knowledge, 12 is even. Now, we can split this up into cases. We can see that in case 1, for all values of n, when n is odd, what we've got here, we've got an even number which is 12 our even number we times in that because it's 12 this is the same as 12 times and we times in an even number by an odd number and what do we get when we times an even number by an odd number by the basic laws of mathematics if we times an even by an odd we get an even happy days and then let's look at the second case when n is actually even. Then you've got 12, which is our even number, and we times in that by an even number. And what we can see, we've got even times an even, which is also an even number. So we've proved now for all, so we can say, well, therefore, for all n, our expression, I'm going to call this star to save me having to write it out again, our expression star will always be even. Now we have it. We've proven we've proven this result. We could have argued actually when n is even, n plus three is odd. N plus three squared is also odd because an odd times an odd is an odd number. Similar argument on the second term. And then we could say well an odd number subtracted from an odd number is even. And then we could apply the same argument when n is actually even. Uh, I find it's much more effective to cancel out the terms and for us to go, um, for us to really go down to the bare bones and simplify this expression as much as we, as we can. Uh, so that's our reasoning. And uh, we can now move on to the next question. So on this next question, it says that n is an integer greater than 1. So that, what that means, first of all, it's greater than 1. And it's an integer. So an integer can be a whole number, positive or negative. But since it's got to be greater than 1, that means that it can't be equal to 1. So all our possible values for n can be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on and so on and so on. Now, it says prove algebraically. So that's important. We need to prove algebraically that n squared minus 2 minus n minus 2 squared is always an even number. So we need what we need to do is to, first of all, let's, let us uh, write out n squared minus 2 again. Let's see what we can do about this second term here, n minus 2 squared. Well, we can go over here and we can see that n minus 2 all squared is actually equal to n minus 2 times n minus 2. And we can apply the same logic as what we did before. We can see that n times n is n squared. n times minus 2 is minus 2n. We've got another minus 2n over here. And then finally we've got uh, minus 2 times minus 2, which is plus 4. So if we simplify this expression, we've got n squared minus 4n plus 4. But we can now write n squared minus 4n plus 4. But, as a big but, we've got this minus sign here. So that means, just like in the same problem, we need to put a minus here. But it's not enough just to put minus n squared and then keep everything the same. We have to subtract this whole thing. So now what we've got, we've got n squared minus 2 minus n squared 
plus 4 then, because we've got minus times minus 4 then, so that's plus 4 then. And finally, we've got minus 4. Now, we can see here that the n squareds cancel out. So we can see now we've got 4 then, minus 2, minus 4, which is 4 then, minus 6. And what we can also do here, we can also take out a factor of 2, because 2 is our highest common factor of 4 and 6. So we can factorise as well, and we can say that we've got 2 brackets 2n minus 3. Okay, now what we can see here, we can see in this term here, whether this is odd or whether it's even, again, we can go back to the two cases, whether this is odd or even, it doesn't matter, because 2 is always an even number. So I'm going to say since 2 is even, then you're either going to times an even by an odd, which gives you an even number, or you're going to times an even times an even number, which is also always going to be even. The other way of looking at this is that 2, two brackets 2n two minus 3 is the same as 2 times brackets 2n two minus 2. So we know that this whole thing must be divisible by 2. And of course, every number which is divisible by 2 is always even. So that's it. We're good to go. That completes our argument for this particular question. Similar question, and by the way, uh, I feel it would be really beneficial for you if you paused the video and had a go at these problems individually, uh, one by one. I really feel that would be uh, important for you. So let's again, uh, let's again use the same uh, principle here. So it says prove algebraically that 2n plus 1 all squared minus 2n plus 1 is an even number for all positive integers, integer values of n. So what that means, first of all, we can deal with these term by term. We can see we've got 2n plus 1 all squared. So what we can do with that, we can go over here and we can say, well, 2n plus 1 all squared is the same as 2n plus 1 times 2n plus 1. And we can do exactly the same as what we've been doing. So we've got 2n times 2n. Well, 2 times 2 is 4, and n times n is n squared. So 2n times 2n is 4n squared. And then we can also see uh, that we've got 2n times 1, which is just 2n. We've got another 1 times 2n over here, so that's another 2n. And finally, we've got plus 1. So if we tidy this up and we simplify, we've got 4n squared plus 4n plus 1. So now what we can do, we can actually we can rewrite 2n plus 1 squared and instead we can see that we've got 4n squared plus 4n plus 1. Now we've got minus 2n and since we're subtracting everything inside the brackets, we've got minus 2n and we've got minus plus 1 which is minus 1. So what we can see now guys, we can see that the plus 1 over here cancels out of the minus 1 over here and that leaves us with 4n squared and then if we combine the like terms here we've got plus 4n and we've got minus 2n so we can actually put minus 2 uh, plus 2n over here. Now what we need to do, we need to factorise this expression next. So if we look at the numbers first, we can see that the highest common factor of 4 and 2 will simply be equal to 2. If we move on to the variables, we've got n squared, which is n times n, and then we've got n. Well, our highest common factor of n times n and n is just going to be n. So we can write 2n here, and then we can create a pair of brackets. Now, since there's a plus over here between the two terms, that means we must put a plus over here. Now, for the first entry, we need to work, we need to work out, well, what's something times 2n, which would give us 4n squared, and we can see that our something is going to be 2n. And then something times 2n equals 2n, that something is simply going to be equal to 1, like so. What we can see, though, now is that 
we can rewrite this. This is the same as 2 times n times 2n plus 1. Now what we can clearly see here is that 2 is an even number. So 2 is even. So if we look at the rest of all this stuff over here, this is either going to be odd or it's going to be even. And we can use the same arguments as what we did in the previous question. Whether this whole thing over here, whether this whole thing over here is even or whether it's odd, it doesn't matter because we times in this whole thing, this stuff, by an even number too anyway, which means that this expression will always be even. And we can and we can apply the same argument. Well two is even, so even times odd is even, even times even is even. And our proof actually follows. Okay. So hope this video has helped you out uh, and I shall see you in the next section.